Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Since no one came here to hear me, we will get through with this quickly. <laughs> I am Cato Johnson. I'm vice chair of the Board of Trustees and a member of the Board Athletic Committee. And it is my pleasure to welcome you here today. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees and also uh, the advisors who work with the athletic director, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. I would like to read a statement from my president, Dr. M. David Rudd, who is in California, and this is his statement. Our athletic director, Larry Veach, did an exceptional job directing this search. He identified the needs of our program, along with the characteristics and experience of the individual needed to help this program take the next big step in this remarkable trajectory. I want to say thank you to Laird and to the search committee members at the thorough and thoughtful national search and exceptional individuals identified. He just happened to be a Memphian. That's not unusual for a national rank program. That is, the in internal intent and internal talent already here would be at the level necessary to move the program forward. Congratulations, Coach Silverfield. He's unique and a passionate talent. His expectations for this program are to compete at the highest level, and I am confident that he will build on a well-established foundation to help us take another step forward for Tiger football. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce our athletic director, Larry Beach. It's always hard to follow Cato. He's the sharpest dressed man in the room every time. So thank you, Cato. I got to turn these back in. <laughs> there you go. Um, I want to thank Cato, and I want to thank uh, President Rudd and, and uh, several folks that were really surrounding me through this process and advising and supporting me as, as we move forward. Uh, first of all, a few of our trustees, in addition to Mr. Johnson, uh, Dave North, Brad Martin, and Alan Graff were instrumental through the process. Uh, my, uh, my new friend and representative of the Board of Visitors, Mike Bruns. Um, uh, Dr. K.B. Turner, the chair of our faculty athletic committee. Thank you, K.B. And uh, I had several former players, um, well, I shouldn't say several, a few former players that uh, advised me a little bit throughout the process. And one of the things that uh, I realized early on is after being here just 10 weeks on the job, that I really needed some folks to help me see and understand and really know what Memphis football was about and what this culture represented. So having some former players involved was and advising me was nice. Um, it, especially nice was uh, Reed Hedgepeth. So Reed, I, uh, I really want to make a special rec uh, recognition of you and thank you for being with me throughout the whole process. Uh, Reed's a former player. He's also uh, obviously a leader in our community and he was uh, absolutely fantastic throughout. So thank you, Reed. I want to thank our administrative team, uh, particularly Jeff Crane. Um, uh, we had a lot of folks do a lot of work, but Jeff, you were uh, my right-hand man, man and uh, strength throughout the process. Thank you for all your work. Um, and then I want to uh, tell you just a little bit about Ryan. Uh, you will have the, uh, the release and all the details. I won't give you all the specific highlights, uh, but I do want, uh, first of all, I'm, gonna, I'm sure he's going to recognize his wife, Mariana, here uh, momentarily, but uh, Mariana, if you could uh, stand and, and say hello to the group. We have some flowers over here that uh, we will allow you to pick up there at the end. Um, go ahead and do it now. That's great. She's eager and ready. That's good. It has been a while. It has been a while. <laughs> been waiting for a little while. Somebody has to take care of the football coaches. That's just, just the way it works. Uh, we were able to uh, swing over out of state and pick up Mariana this morning to get her here, and I'm glad she could be here for the moment. Um, they have a dog named Max. I, I, uh, I'm excited to meet Max. I believe Max was with you on the plane today coming back, so glad you could uh, both be in town. Um, you know, we all know that uh, Ryan's been a great offensive line coach, um, a great associate head coach involved in the program in so many ways. He's been up for uh, uh, Coach of the Year finalist for offensive line. His, his uh, offensive lines have performed at a real high level. Uh, but what really stuck out to me is, is Ryan's been coaching almost literally all his life. He really, since high school, so uh, 22 years, is that right? So since you were 18 years old, you've been out on a football field coaching, uh, coaching young men um, and coaching men that were your age at the time, I'm sure. 
Uh, he's coached at the high school level, the college level, uh, obviously in the NFL, and uh, perhaps most importantly, he's the coach that's been here for the last four years and been a part of this, an integral part of this program and, and the rise to where we are today. And uh, it's, it's so exciting to see you here in front of me. Um, you know, when I stood up here uh, five days ago, seems like a long five days, let me tell you, um, I talked about our department and university leadership working diligently to find and identify the right coach. Um, I talked about how because of the investments that have been made in this program, and it's important that we continue to make investments in this program, uh, and because of the recent success and because of the, the, the quality of this community and how you all have embraced this program, that this would be a, a, a job that would be extremely attractive to national candidates across the country. And I can tell you that that proved to be very true. I'm also very proud and confident of the process we went through. Uh, we were very diligent, uh, had several people around me advising me and leading us all through it. Um, and I will tell you, throughout that process, I, before I met with you uh, five days ago, I met with the team. And uh, this was an idea of Mr. Cranes. And uh, he, he suggested that we hand out these note cards to all the players. So we handed them all out, and I asked them to write on there what they were looking for in a head coach, right? Um, and uh, then I had one of our smart young um, administrators put together a word cloud, which I have no idea to do, how to do. But uh, there it is in front of you. And I showed it to the team. And uh, I just want to read some of these things to you. Um, they wanted, wanted somebody that's real, somebody that's a winner, a competitor with high energy, uh, someone that truly loves and cares for the players. Um, they wanted a Memphian, somebody who was all in someone that could uh, continue to provide the discipline and accountability that is really a hallmark of this program, as I've come to find, someone that's authentic and someone that can continue to take us along where we've been, uh, winning championships. Ultimately, I will tell you that uh, when I look for a head coach, and I, I get a lot of questions uh, through this process about, do we want an offensive-minded coach? Do we want a defensive-minded coach? Uh, what are we looking for specifically? And what I wanted is a great leader, and I'm confident we found him. You know, I also want to be very clear, Ryan won this job. He clearly won this job. We went through a process that was fairly grueling, and he won it outright and not for any other reason. He separated himself by his preparation, by his commitment and passion for this program, and his talent and ability to get it done. I'm confident that Ryan Silverfield is the right man at the right time for Memphis football. That's what we're looking for. That's right. oh, yeah. I'm truly excited to uh, come alongside him and support him and, and all our coaches uh, as we move this program forward. So with that, I ask you to help me welcome the new head football coach for the Memphis Tigers, Ryan Silverfield. Easier last Sunday. <laughs> there you go. A dream come true. My dream job. To have the chance to stand in front of our team minutes ago, to be named the head football coach of the University of Memphis, a dream come true. This is my dream job. Honored, humbled, grateful, sincere, appreciative. I can go on and on about the adjectives and adverbs, about how I feel about this place, this university. I can't wait. So excited. But let me start by thanking so many individuals that have made this happen. I apologize ahead of time because I'm sure I'll leave out so many people that have got to me this, so this have gotten me to this point. Let me start by thanking Dr. Rudd. Dr. Rudd has been wonderful to me, my family, this entire time. Truly appreciative of everything he's done for me. 
I'd like to thank Laird Veach, our director of athletics, who's a gentleman who I can't wait to stand side by side, <laughs> locked arm in arm, and take this program and this athletic department to new heights. I'd like to thank Jeff Crane for his work. I look forward to working alongside him as well. Reed Hedgepeth, thank you. You're a true Memphian. Loves this program, loves this city. Thank you. Honored to call you a friend. Brad Martin, truly a gentleman, a good hearted soul. I'm grateful also who has been along with me along this journey and can't wait for many more years to having Brad in my corner. Dave North, who's not here today, Dave's been a wonderful friend. Truly grateful for his friendship and everything he's done. Alan Graff, another gentleman that's been so wonderful to me. Ed Moranowitz, the dear old friend who's been by my side this whole time, who's seen the ups and downs of my coaching career. There are so many of you out there today, I wish I could name all your names, but I can look at you right now and know how grateful I am to call you guys friends. Thank you all for your support. Along this way, there's been so many people that have gotten me to this point. Right When I was 18 years old, as Laird just mentioned, coaching at a high school in Jacksonville, Florida, and then at the age of 20, coaching at Division III school as a D-line coach in the middle of nowhere, Virginia, to having the opportunity to be a head high school coach at a young age, to coaching in the NFL, to finally coming to what a place I call home, Memphis. I'm so honored and grateful for all those coaches, all those players along the way. But I'd be doing a disjustice if I didn't thank the current players on this Memphis roster. I think there was slight joy and excitement a few minutes ago when I had the chance to hug most of them, if not all of them. And that's where the joy comes from, to see those young men that I will have the opportunity to lead along with the rest of our staff to sense a genuine excitement for me to be their next head football coach. Pure joy. It warms my heart. I'd like to thank the city of Memphis. I'm one of you. I couldn't be here without you guys, your support, the former Tiger players, everybody. So grateful. Again, there's plenty of people that I'm probably leaving out. But last and certainly not least, I got to thank my rock. Not just you, Cato. I see, that, I see that rock on your hand, but thank yeah, thank you for your support. Let's go win a bunch more of those. But it's it's funny. I truly only tear up the times I get to look at my wife in the eyes. And I'm so grateful. She stood by my side the last ten years, through ups and downs, wins and losses. Proud of her and everything she's done. Thank you. I guess they say offensive line coaches shouldn't cry, but I'm a head coach now, so gosh darn it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> With all that being said, I want you all to know that the direction this program is going to be held is going to continue going the right direction. We're going to do it the right way at all times. I constantly throw out terms like structure, standard, and accountability. Those are the words I threw out to our players in our team meeting not too long ago. We're going to do it the right way. Everything is going to matter in this program, from academics to how we live socially to what we do in the community and on the football field. It is all going to matter. Every day is just going to be just as important as the last. We will make this city proud. We will make the University of Memphis proud. All of our fans, thank you. We will make you proud. I'm excited about this journey for many, many years to come. I can't wait to get started, even though I feel like I've already gotten started. Again, thank you. I'm honored and humbled and so appreciative to the city of Memphis, to the university, 
to our athletic department to be your head football coach. Go Tigers, go. Yeah, uh, my mind's been racing for a long time since Saturday night. Um, and almost now, a full week later, um, and th this opportunity, uh, like you said, my dream job. And all it means is I just need to work harder, right? No days off, no hours off. I haven't got a lot of sleep. So when I was, when Laird actually came by my house last night and offered me the job, um, True excitement, felt honored, grateful, and ready to get to work. Um, also have a pretty darn good opponent coming up in Penn State. So that, so that went through my mind as well. Uh, but just, just excited to hit the ground running. And when he gave me the interim tag, I told him, I'm going to treat it just like it's my job. And I haven't stopped since, and I won't stop till you guys drag me out of here. So that's how I'll treat it, and I'll treat every day the exact same. I'll give it my all to this university and this football program. Uh, Coach, uh, sure. Well, let's first go on and, and, and say when you went into the, into the meeting room with the players and, and looked at them and I'm sure they had an inkling already, but give us a little sense of what that was like for you and what you saw. Pure joy. Um, some hugs, some clapping, some emotions. Uh, I think you realize the impact you can make on the young men, uh, the student athletes here at the university. When you get to see them share the same type of joy you do, that means maybe you've made a difference along the way. And that's what this is all about. It's my job as a head football coach to serve our student athletes. It's our assistant coach's jobs to serve our student athletes. Every day and everything we do, all parts of life. And to see some of them with the Smiles as big as mine, pure joy, pure appreciation, hopefully for a little part that I play in their life and the part that will continue to pay, play in their life. That gave me so much happiness. And at the end of the day, we got a lot of work to do. And they know I'll hold them accountable. And I think they're excited about that. And we've got a bright future ahead of us. Sure. Um, really, really meant more than words I can put in words, truly. Because if the current players, the former players, and people that I've been associated with believe in me, it gives me a chance to say that maybe I've done it the right way along the way. And that's how I want to approach every single day. Do it the right way all the time. And if those people believed in me and thought that I had a chance to do something special and lead this program, that means that don't ever waver from doing it the right way all the time. Always be myself. Continue to pour into them. And, and truly, truly knew that that was the right way to do things. Um, I talked with Laird about this. I said, look, you know, one of the things I try to do is actually stay off social media. Yeah, I, kind of hard, but at the end of the day, it was, it was nice to see the support. But I told him, and we've talked about this, I didn't want that support, whether it be from former players, current players, the fans, the boosters. I didn't want that to have any play, say in who he was hiring. I wanted him to hire the best coach for this program, the right fit for this program. And we looked eye to eye last night, and he said, you are the right guy. You are the right fit. Not because of anything else other because the direction we need to take this program. That gave me a great sense of relief and understanding that we'll continue to do this the right way. So with all that being said, obviously, really, really Appreciative. I know I use that word a lot, but I am. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to get that support. But it's time to go to work. Yeah, I think in life, 
it's not always about just having patience, right? Sometimes it's the, the ones that work hard and are loyal. Sometimes they don't always get what they want. In this case, I was loyal to a program. I was loyal to a city and it worked out in my favor. So it's kind of a message to all those people that have been working really hard at things in life and, and are loyal and, and have a dream that they want to accomplish and people believe in them, keep working, it will come true. And the ability to have those blessed with so many other opportunities. I truly didn't waver at them because this is the one I always wanted. This is the job I always wanted. And I've loved this. You know, I mentioned this on Sunday, right? If you love Memphis, it freaking loves you back. <laughs> and the support of this city, second to none. And so I'm grateful, we are grateful to be here in Memphis for the support of the city. And we will make you proud in everything we do. Great question. I, truth be told, I had never really thought of being the head coach at Memphis prior to coming here. And I think once you become intertwined with the city, its culture, the people, the friends I've made along the way, the relationships that are built, I didn't want those to go away. I wanted to be here. And so, excuse me, over the years, even after a few months of being here, I realized how special this place was, how special our leaders are at this school. There's a great sense of pride in being a Memphian. We wear 901 on our sleeves and on our heart. And the way the support from this university, from this athletic department, from the leadership top down, that's when I realized this was a dream job. I'd never wanted to let it go. And it led me here today, and I'm so damn honored. Yeah, great. You know, I did not do my due diligence by thanking Coach Norvell. I was wrong for that. And so Mike Norvell gave me this opportunity to come with him. So let it be known that I am so thankful for Mike Norvell. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here. His friendship, his trust, his guidance, his leadership, I will value to the day I die. Truly a man that did the right way, not just on the field or in the X's and O's, but did the right way. Respected by his peers, respected by the city, respected by the fans and the players. So I'm thankful to Mike Norvell. I'll ever, forever be indebted to him for this opportunity. Learned a lot. We talk about the culture of a place. He helped build this culture. And I learned that there's a right way to do things. And so for that, those things will continue. We will continue to build our culture stronger and do things at a high level. There's a lot of other coaches. Coach Corky Rogers, a guy that's a Hall of Fame at the, in Florida high school association, give him a lot of credit. Guys like George O'Leary along the way, right? Marty Favrette, the head coach at Division Three school, gave me my first full-time job. Grateful for Brad Childress, Leslie Frazier, Mark Sussman, an athletic director that hired a 23-year-old that had no idea what he was doing a long time ago in Savannah, Georgia. You know, grateful for all those people. And that's what led me here. And in this coaching profession, you learn from everybody. I learned a lot from our assistants that have been here at Memphis since I've been here. And I will continue to learn. So speaking of that assistant question, that's what everybody wants to know about the bowl game. How do those negotiations go? And what does it mean to you to have a ground Sure. As things stand right now, um, the assistants that are currently in place will coach with us through the bowl game. Um, the Cotton Bowl is a big game. We're excited about it. And um, that's all I can say on that. Um, we've got a great group of assistants. Obviously, you don't win the many amount of games that we've won here uh, without having a great staff, our support staff, um, from everybody in this room, our academic support, Sherry Schwartz, who's been my sidekick, who's can't wait to continue to work with her. Those type of people, they're the ones that make the wins occur on the field. And uh, But our assistant coaches will coach with us through the bowl game, 
and then we'll figure it out from there. But right now, I'm grateful that they're by our side as well. Yeah, I, I, in this profession, sorry, there's some hard days. Look, everybody in this room has had some hard days. I certainly don't sit here and claim to have it, say that I've had a hard life. I've been blessed. But there's been some days when maybe you're out of a job or you feel like you can't score any points. that You say, man, what am I doing? There's times in my career I've made $5,000 a year. I've slept on a cot. Or I couldn't get phone calls returned. Um, so you sit there, but you always look in the mirror and say, you're built for this. And if you per persevere and you believe and other people believe in you, you can accomplish anything. And I've always said this, if you keep swinging that ax, good things will come. And I'll take that same approach here every single day. We're going to swing. We're going to keep swinging. We're going to keep swinging. We're going to have a lot of success in everything we do here because of that. Yep. Um, no, was, I wonderful to have the opportunity to go and meet with the team today. All right, we'll we'll have a practice starting on Sunday, a team banquet Sunday night, and then we presume practice for the Cotton Bowl this week. Uh, we've got official visitors here this weekend, so right when we're done here, I've got to go put on my recruiting hat and let's go. Uh, so I'll spend the weekend with recruits, um, and then practice on Sunday with our current players. In the meantime, at some point, try to study a little Penn State film, and maybe find a, an hour or two for a nap. So that's how I foresee my next few days. We'll take one or two more questions. Anyone? Yes, Joe. Can you tell when you interviewed him? What was that like walking into the interview? Was it a modified approach with Jayla Sunday, or what was that like? Uh, I interviewed not too distant, not too distant past. And uh, to be honest with you, when I walked into that interview room with the men on the search committee, it was a sense of relief because I got a chance to sit down and finally tell my story. Share with them my vision for this program. And that's the easy part. Really, everyone said, oh, you must have prepared. You must have prepared for your interview. Well, it's been a lifetime of preparation. It's been the four years here at Memphis, having an understanding for the culture and everything we do here. But I didn't sit up one night sitting there worried about how it act. The biggest piece of advice every coach gave me was just be yourself. And I'm fortunate that those people in that interview room liked what they saw from across the way, and uh, it worked out. But at the end of the day, just like today, didn't come up here with any note cards, really didn't think about it. All I could think about is the next step in my job, and this opportunity that I've been invited to keep working and keep chopping away at it. You know, it's going to be a program that we set an environment with high standards where every single day the players come into a positive environment and when they leave here, they're better off for being in our program. And that means that everything matters from academics, like I said earlier, to the community, to the way we train, to the way we respect each other, to the way we serve each other the way we do every single thing, it will matter, right? To the way we talk to each other, to the way we study film, to the way we respect women, to the way we travel, to the way we take the field with great excitement, fast, physical, the mindset to go out there that no obstacle will want to get in our way. That's the type of program you'll see with the Ryan Silverfield program. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. it.